all of us could be up here uh, doing this. They just happened to choose me for some reason. Uh, so I would like to get uh, conversations going. So don't uh, don't hesitate. Uh, and don't wait for me to complete my sentence because I have like these long sentences. So just interrupt me, <laughs> you know, and say, find them that bullshit, you know, and uh, then that will get the conversation going. <laughs> Uh, I, uh, uh, my colleagues here who know me well uh, know I never had an original idea in my life, uh, nor am I likely to, uh, but I take great pride in my ability to steal all the good ideas from my esteemed colleagues and, and, uh, and roll it all into a package and present it to my students. So, uh, and then as I uh, uh, become more familiar with this art, uh, we discover that people like uh, Melvin Purvis and Frank Hamer and, uh, and and probably a generation earlier, some names we don't even know. We're doing all this stuff, <laughs> you know, long before any of us were born, and then we all rediscover it and think we're all geniuses. Uh, so I think uh, all of us stand on the shoulders of our, our of our colleagues who have gone before, who have made all the same mistakes, and and, uh, and now we're trying to make fewer mistakes but still uh, uh, advance the art. Anyway, uh, I'm John Farnham. Uh, I'm a deputy sheriff with Park County in Colorado. Uh, I'm currently in my 41st year of law enforcement, uh, certainly long enough to know better. Uh, but uh, some time ago I discovered there's no money in law enforcement. And so I spent most of my adult life uh, traveling around the world uh, teaching uh, the art and science of defensive shooting. And that's, of course, why we're all here uh, together today. And I think the topic, what was the topic? The topic I'm supposed to talk about is um, uh, changes I've made in our curriculum, our training curriculum, due to uh, current uh, and recent world events and what I'm maybe doing differently now than uh, I did a number of years ago when I first started doing this. So that's what I'll launch into. and. Uh, as I say, uh, don't hesitate to chime in here and uh, say something, because we have a lot of instructors in this room, and I suspect none of us are teaching the same thing we taught even a couple of years ago, that we've been compelled uh, by circumstances to modify our uh, curriculum. When I first started doing this, I guess like, like all of us, I tried to ask myself, what am I preparing my students for? What, is, what sort of sorts of challenges uh, do our students need to be prepared for? And I decided that what we should be training for is what we call a domestic defensive scenario, uh, the kind of stuff uh, Tom Gibbons uh, talks about in his class. Uh, burglary suspects and assault suspects and all that, how we're going to deal with these people, how we're going to keep them getting hurt. Uh, how we're going to be victorious when it comes we have to go to guns, and how we're going to be victorious. And uh, I soon discovered that uh, uh, the analogy I sometimes use, we're, we're teaching people uh, basically how to make breakfast. How do you make breakfast? Well, there's more to making breakfast than just learning how to operate a waffle iron. You know, we all, that's where the glamour is, of course. We all like to teach all our students how to, how to run waffle irons. And, uh, but there's no order making breakfast and just running a waffle iron. And uh, students need to know how to, uh, uh, for instance, uh, through posture and through uh, uh, verbalization, tape loops we sometimes call it, uh, how we can successfully disengage, how we can successfully be deselected, that is, uh, uh, not be, not be uh, selected for victimization. Uh, fail our addition, as it were. How, how can we consistently fail our addition? Uh, how can I identify danger cues? How can I know when we're going to guns? Uh, how can I stay, stay a step ahead and uh, uh, be there uh, with my gun out, with my sights on target before they're needed? But not too far before. Uh, and again, how can I run this gun ac ac accurately? How can I end this fight quickly? By inflicting uh, multiple fatal wounds on uh, suspects. 
Uh, and then it's not over, of course. Uh, maybe there are more suspects. What do I do next? Uh, how do I deal with the, uh, uh, the criminal justice system and the personage of police officers who are arriving? Uh, I don't think being shot by police is any more pleasant than being shot by bad guys. Uh, so how can I make sure I don't get shot by police? How can I uh, avoid some of the pitfalls? How can I avoid saying foolish and incriminating things that uh, these investigating officers write down and then uh, later on I regret having said? And finally, you know, how do I fit this in with the rest of my life? This is probably the most exciting thing that's going to happen to you all day. Uh, and the aftermath, at least uh, in this country, is going to be expensive. You know how our legal system works. Innocent until proven indigent. Uh, <laughs> we have the, uh, the best justice money can buy, and uh, uh, shooting a machete-wielding uh, assault suspect in your living room uh, tonight after he broke the door down is still going to be very expensive. Uh, it's going to be uh, emotionally traumatic, that's the right word. A lot of us uh, uh, take our mental health for granted. You should. Uh, right now you're on top of the world and everything's going just fine and you get your bills paid and blah 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 blah. How much of your world will have to fall apart before your mental health will be jeopardized? Uh, I found out last year when I faced death in the face for the first time in about 45 years. Uh, on my 51st day in Vietnam I got my third Purple Heart and they sent me home. I was a young Marine infantry, infantry lieutenant, that most expendable battlefield commodities. Uh, and uh, I lived through it. Uh, most of my friends didn't. And I lived through it through no fault of my own, of course. But uh, 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 when I got home, I discovered that uh, I was very angry. And uh, I still am. I'll never get over it. Uh, that our training was so poor especially with small arms. Our trainers didn't know anything more than we did. And uh, so when I got there, I had to find out the hard way how to run this, all this stuff. And uh, well, once again, I lived through it.